Hi everyone, thanks for watching another video about this CompTIA Security Plus certification. Today we're going to look at some exam questions. We will go over them together and hopefully we can learn from it. Uh, this way you have a good idea what you can expect on the exam. Thanks for watching, see you soon. Hi everyone, thanks for checking out another cybersecurity video about the CompTIA security certification exam. Today we're gonna make video six and it's actually quite difficult, this test. Uh, I did it before, so I already learned quite something from it, otherwise it, this would be a very long video. So let's start with the questions. Um, a difference between passive and active security breach um, that's an intrusion detection and an intrusion prevention system uh, one detects an attack pattern if it's an attack pattern a based firewall and the other one prevents it detection and prevention and both intrusion next which of the following network security solutions inspects network traffic in real time and has the capability to stop an ongoing attack? That's an NIDS, a Network Intrusion Detection System, if I'm correctly. Which of the actions listed below can be taken by an IDS, so an, an Intrusion Detection System? That's logging of the event, and that's sending alert to the network administrator or the uh, system engineer or whatever you want to call it. Sending an alert of an, an, a detected intrusion. And logging can be used for debugging to maybe even uh, with that information make sure that the IPS, the prevention system, um, you know, will, will give uh, less false positives, stuff like that. So with the logging, you can make the IPS work better. This statement is true. Signature based IDS. Uh, the signature of a pattern of an attack. Mm, let's see. Heuristic. Uh, Anomaly based. And what more? Yeah, behavioral, not signature based. Continue. Let's see. Passive and out of band. Mirroring. Yes, okay. We're talking about a false positive in this example. Here we're talking about a false negative. IP packets between dissimilar types of computers is called a router because a router is basically sitting at the gate, sometimes it's also called a gateway uh, between the internet and your own network. So there are diff dissimilar types of computers on that network. Inside the network you have a switch most often. A hub is very old, I think nobody uses that anymore and a load balancer is definitely something else. A load balancer can be placed in front of a server um, to yeah load the balance uh, to to load um, the 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 weight of the requests done that to that servers and maybe reroute it over um, multiple servers so that the website or the web servers or something that you're running there uh, is still responsive and quick and accurate. Continue. Uh, that's a layer three, yes. And of course at the network layer, yeah. Set of rules that specify which user, users or system processes are granted access to objects. Objects, I think, being the network in this. This is an access control list, which is following rule-based access control. Rule-based, you set up the rules yourself in the access control list. And an access control list can be set up on routers, switches, and firewalls. 
So still an access control list. Yeah, all of the above. Filtering by IP address, by protocol, by subnet, or port number. All can be set up on a router. Mm, doesn't matter which range. So I think also all the above. Doesn't matter, you can set up your own range and the router will hand out uh, through the DHCP server new um, IP addresses to new clients connected to that network. And if the DHCP server is set up on the router, it doesn't matter. You just give in um, what IP range you want. This is more home stuff and those two, this is, this is more corporate and this is, yeah. Anyway, um, this is how it comes out of the box. This is standard IP uh, ranges. So all of the above. Mm, layer two. So the layer three is a router, layer two is a switch. Uh, this is the Ethernet switch X an authenticator for devices intend to connect to network through one of its port. That's the X standard. Listen guys, I really had to study for this as well. It's, uh, it's not easy, but you really have to remember a lot of stuff. And when you're into it, it's not very difficult to uh, remember. But the question like this can throw you off uh, off guard. But uh, I did this test a few times before and I remember here is X. So just keep on studying and uh, follow me on this journey. Thanks. Um, hmm. Disabling unused. Yeah, of course. Yeah, if you don't use the port, just close it. Then uh, your attack surface is, uh, is decreased and the chances of being hacked or an uh, open port being misused for something else will decrease. So that's safer. Continue. A network switch equipped with routing capabilities, layer 3. Net routing capabilities. Routing happens at layer 3, so a layer 3 switch is sometimes called a router, so that's true. These two bad boys. Continue. Uh, Mac table with invalid. I think that flood guarding. I'm not sure. I think it's it. Yes. Okay. No. Proxy. Uh, proxy server. It's basically a man in the middle, but on, then on the good side. Continue. A forward proxy. So a normal proxy always uh, acts uh, on behalf of the client and it hides the identity of the client because you, as a um, client, you connect to the proxy server and the proxy server gets something on the internet. And then the internet sends it back to the proxy server and sends it back to the client. So a forward proxy acts on behalf of the client. You only have to remember forward proxy and um, you have to remember the other proxy server and that's a reverse proxy. So continue here, yeah, reverse proxy. Just remember reverse proxy is on behalf of the server. Also hides the identity of the server. So that goes the other way around. So then, you, as a client, if I remember correctly, you connect to the reverse proxy, the proxy gets it off the server, sends it back to the proxy, and then you uh, set the reverse proxy sends it back to the client. So then the proxy server is located close to the server and acts on behalf of the server. Doesn't require client side protection. Client might be unaware of transparent. Yes. So you don't need to set up any configuration on the client side and clients might be unaware of the proxy server even existing. Continue. Modifies and requires. Yeah, that's basically the opposite of a transparent proxy. 
finish. IDS IPS was correct. Oh, I missed nips. So NIDS and NIPS. Hmm. Okay. So still IDS IPS. I missed one there. Logging. An IDS logs the event and sends an alert to the administrator. This statement is correct. Heuristic. Anomaly based behavioral. Okay, correct. Administrator. Operation mode passive and out of band. False positive, false negative. Filter and transfer IP packets. Different computer networks the WAN and the LAN. WAN, wide area network, LAN network. And that's uh, in the middle sits a router. And the router operates at layer 3 and the network layer of the OZ model. Uh, correct. Access control list. Access control list. All of this can be set up on a router, all the above. Like I talked before, the IP ranges doesn't really matter. You set it all up in the router. It doesn't matter what range, but you have to set it up. Default is usually this. Layer 2 devices are switches. The standard was correct. True statement. A switch or layer 3 switch is a router. Switching loops, STP and RSTP. Flood guarding, proxy server. You see, forward proxy on behalf of the client, reverse proxy on Did I miss this? Hides the identity of the server. I I chose this one, that's done. Okay, the reverse proxy acts on behalf of the server forward on behalf of the client. I missed another one here. Redirects client requests and response without modifying them. Okay. Doesn't require configuration and clients might be unaware. Okay, well, three answers there. Missed one. And yes, this does modify client requests and responses and it requires client-side configuration, prob most probably in the browser itself. 25 questions, 22 answers correctly. Not bad, but this is, uh, this is not easy, all of this. This is a lot of terms and you need to know what's going on and yeah, what's a reverse proxy, what's a trans uh, transparent proxy, what's a forward proxy, um, what's a level two uh, um, network device, how does the OZ model looks like. OZ model. Let's see. Can I open this a little bit bigger? Yes, we agree about your goddamn cookies. Just a second. Hey, this is nice. Can I zoom out a little bit? So layer, layer two, media layer, host layers. And this got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven layers. So layer two switch. And this is packets. So this is really, this is where the routers are at packet level. And frames level is the yeah switches and hubs. MAC addresses, physical addressing, network and IP addresses above that segments. And this is the actual data itself. So the data session, data presentation, and the data and the application network process to the application itself. Interesting stuff. Let's go back here and zoom out. Great. Well, um, thanks for watching this video and we uh, hope to see you in the next one.